Ariel, one of Uranus' moons, may have a subsurface ocean. Recent observations using the James Webb Space Telescope suggest that Ariel, one of Uranus' moons, may have a hidden ocean beneath its surface. Using the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers collected emission spectra from Ariel and compared them with spectra of simulated chemical mixtures in the lab. This showed that the moon has a rich supply of carbon dioxide. This is intriguing because in the frigid regions of the solar system where Uranus orbits, 20 times farther from the Sun than Earth, carbon dioxide easily turns into a gas and escapes into space. This in turn means that some process must be delivering CO2 to Ariel's surface. Until now, the most popular idea was that interactions between the Moon's surface and charged particles in Uranus' magnetosphere create carbon dioxide through a process called radiolysis. However, new research published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters suggests that carbon dioxide and other molecules are escaping from the Moon's interior, perhaps from a subsurface ocean. Ariel is one of Uranus' five largest moons. Although the ice giant has 28 natural satellites, at least that's what we know about them. The five largest are called Titania, about 1,578 kilometers in diameter, Oberon, about 1,522 kilometers in diameter, Umbriel about 1,169 kilometers in diameter, Ariel, about 1,158 kilometers in diameter, and Miranda, about 471 kilometers in diameter. Ariel was discovered along with Umbriel in 1,851 by William Lassell. Its name comes from two different literary works, William Shakespeare's play The Tempest and Alexander Pope's poem The Snatched Lock. In 1986, the Voyager 2 probe took images of Ariel while passing by Uranus, and these are the only high-resolution images of the Moon that we have. The images showed Ariel's cratered surface and deep, long gullies. Scientists believe that Ariel is composed of ice and rocky materials. Its surface is relatively young and shows signs of geological activity, most likely driven by tidal heating. A study published last year concluded that the moon may have water. Uranus is unique in the solar system because its axis of rotation is highly tilted. Its poles lie where most planets have their equators. Ariel orbits Uranus in the equatorial plane, which is nearly perpendicular to the planet's orbit. Chemical elements and molecules absorb and emit light at characteristic wavelengths, leaving individual fingerprints on the emission spectra. Using the Webb Telescope, a team of researchers led by Richard Cartwright of Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory collected spectra of the Moon allowing them to determine its chemical composition in detail. Comparing this to simulated spectra from a chemical mixture prepared in a laboratory on Earth revealed that Ariel has some of the richest carbon dioxide deposits in the solar system. What's more, the researchers found chemical signatures of carbon monoxide in the spectra. It shouldn't be there. You have to get down to 30 kelvins, minus 233 degrees Celsius, before carbon monoxide becomes stable, Cartwright said. Meanwhile, Ariel's average surface temperature is about 18 degrees Celsius warmer. Carbon monoxide must be actively replenishing, no doubt, he added. Cartwright acknowledged that radiolysis could be responsible for some of that replenishing. Laboratory experiments have shown that radiation bombardment of water ice mixed with carbon-rich material can produce both carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. However, 
observations from the Voyager 2 flyby and other recent discoveries suggest that the interactions behind radiolysis may be limited because Uranus's magnetic field axis and the orbital plane of its moons are shifted by about 58 degrees. Scientists have concluded that most of the carbon monoxide may come from chemical processes in the subsurface ocean. These compounds most likely make their way to aerial surface through cracks in the moon's icy crust. Furthermore, the new observations suggest that aerial surface may also contain carbonate minerals, which can only be formed by the interaction of liquid water with rocks.